here is another reason why this evening is so very special. We're gathered to support a cause that is very dear to Jerry, to the cast, to the ASCAP Foundation, and to the Chicago Humanities Festival. That is the careful nurturing of young talent on its way up to ensure their engagement with our American musical heritage. That's what the ASCAP Foundation Jerry Herman Legacy Series is all about. And that's why yesterday was a memorable one for a select group of high school and college students. Over 120 students and their teachers from a dozen Chicago area educational institutions met at DePaul University Student Center in Lincoln Park to participate in a symposium on musical theater, followed by a full day of master classes on performance and technique. Tonight's cast members, including Jerry himself, gave generously of their time and talents to work with this impressive group of young artists. Can you think of anything more meaningful for a group of young musical theater stars than to work with Jerry Herman, Karen Morrow, Paige O'Hara, Jason Graw, and Don Pippen? <laughs> Off, ASCAP Foundation Jerry Herman Legacy Series, in its generosity, has funded three $1,000 scholarships for the most talented participants in the day's activities. The Jerry Herman Legacy Series Master Class Scholarship winners are Steve Tomlitz, a student at Columbia College. a student at Northwestern University. And Angela Groby, a student at Roosevelt University. conductors and arrangers, Mr. Don Pippen.
Thank you. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Miss Karen Morrow. just a few years ago. <laughs> Thank you. Can you believe that? Yes. <laughs> However, I didn't stay very long because I was on my way to New York, and I went by way of Des Moines, Iowa. <laughs> but when I got to New York and got to see Broadway shows, which, of course, I didn't get a chance to see in Des Moines, uh, one of my favorite shows, the first show that I saw, was Milk and Honey by none other than Jerry. Yes, gorgeous score. And this is one of my favorite songs from that score. Shalom, shalom, you'll find shalom, the nicest greeting you know. It means bonjour, salut, and scope. It means a million lovely things like peace be yours, welcome home. And even when you say goodbye, you say goodbye with shalom. It's a very useful word. It can get you through the day. This next 
next gentleman is one of my dearest friends and someone that I just love so much. Now, some people pronounce his name uh, Mr. Gray. Some pronounce his name Mr. Gray. I pronounce it talent. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, Jason Graw. Life is a celebration with you on my arm. Walking's a new sensation with you on my arm. Each time I face a morning that's boring and bland with you, it looks good. With you, it looks great. With you, it looks grand. Somehow you put a permanent star in my eye. Even the dead of winter can feel like July. I found a combination that works like a charm. I'm simply a man who walks on the stars whenever it's you on my eye. This would be the dance break. <laughs> this would be me dancing. <laughs> musical director available. <laughs> no, he's actually the best in the whole world. Do you know, I, I like, um, I like Karen. I do like Karen. I also like Karen. Uh, I was born in Chicago uh, at Wesley Hospital. Thank you, thank you. And uh, thank you both. And uh, I actually uh, uh, lived in Elmhurst, Illinois. Okay, and uh, we called it Keebler Cookie County. <laughs> Thought that was so funny back then. And um, anyway, it was a very happy, healthy, all-American, middle-class family that I lived in. And uh, when my parents got divorced when I was five, <laughs> uh, my mom and I moved to Lombard for a couple of years, and then, uh, and then we moved away. But I, I've come back to Chicago two or three times every year to visit my family and to work, and I, I do feel it's my home, so I just love being here. And uh, it's also a very exciting night to be here because I've never actually been in a Jerry Herman show. So this is so exciting for me. And uh, I was always kind of fell between the cracks. I was always somewhere caught between young Patrick and Gooch. Let's <laughs> see how upsetting that could be for me. So, uh, but I just like my, my castmates so much and I, I like Donald and I like Jerry Herman's music so much. And I, I just feel that like is in the air, don't you? And uh, I gotta tell you, all, all of you, I, I'm so full of life right now, I, I feel compelled to sing this next song because all of you I, I like so much. <laughs> you know, you, I like, so let me tip my hat in your path. I spread my welcome mat. You, I like, can you imagine that? Although your ways may be strange, and there's much that I change somehow, you, I like, and warmly recommend. From now on, we call each other friend. I'll be at your side until the end. Can you believe that I found such a thrill in the sound of the for your ticket. 
<laughs> you did? <laughs> you're very beautiful. <laughs> and so sparkly. <laughs> I noticed you right when I came out, you're just front and center, woo. <laughs> Are those real? <laughs> no? Oh, <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> Maybe we could have a drink after the show. <laughs> My mom's in town, but she doesn't mind. <laughs> hey, well, you know, you, I like so let me tip my hat in your path. I spread my welcome mat. You, I like. Can you imagine that? Although your ways may be strange, and there's much that I change. I'm not quite sure about those shoes with that purse, but other than that, it's great. <laughs> Somehow you I like and warmly recommend I can't even see your shoes. From now on, we call each other friend. I'll be at your side until the end. Is that your husband next to you? <laughs> oh, it's not. Does your husband know that? <laughs> oh, you're not married. Chicago Hilton after the show. <laughs> it's a party up at the bar, it wasn't a hotel joke. Can you believe that I found such a thrill in the sound of the Donald. You know, when you play so aggressively like that, you know what it does to me? It makes me want to do the Kazansky. It really does. <laughs> Don't try this at home. <laughs> do you know, Eileen Makovich taught me this step. <laughs> Big old Lakeshore Drive place. We had a lot of room too. Can you believe that I found such a thrill in the sound? Somehow you I like and warmly recommend. From now on, we call each other friend. I'll be at your side until the end. <laughs> Can you believe that I found such a thrill? That was somebody's great idea to put a ballad on after that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'd like to sing a song I sang when I was a little boy. <laughs> Takes a moment. 
always loved that song, just beautiful. Uh, it is now my distinct pleasure uh, to get to introduce our next artiste, because that's what we are, artistes. Um, yeah, right. Um, anyway, she is truly one of the most brilliant performers I know, uh, one of the most delightful people I know, and it's time for you to see for yourself the wonderful Paige O'Hara. to follow Jason. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. It's been a lot of years since I've been in Chicago, and it feels great to be back. Um, when I first met Jerry and Don, it was many, many years ago when they asked me to portray the role of Mabel in the London concert stage version of Mac and Mabel. Jerry has said it's his favorite score, and it's also my favorite score. But those of you who don't know it, uh, it deals with the passionate and somewhat stormy romance between Max Sennett and Mabel Normand, who were the king and queen of the 1920s silent screen comedies. This is the moment in the play when Mabel sees herself up on the big screen for the very first time. Jerry has said is one of his absolute favorite songs that he's ever written. 
What I find also very interesting is that musical theater, theater critics over the years have said it's also one of the best ballads ever written for the Broadway stage.
now my very special privilege to introduce to you our special guest of honor. He has won more awards than anyone on the face of the earth. He's won Grammys, Emmys, Tony Awards. But you know something? He's also known in our business to be one of the most generous and loving and giving artists in the industry. His accomplishments are truly legendary. Please welcome Mr. Jerry Herman. just poured out in about 25 minutes and I never changed a word of it and sometimes it's like that but now I'd like to play you the most difficult song I ever had to write. When I was working on the score of Mac and Mabel I knew I had to write a love song for a man who didn't know how to say I love you. Mac said it was tough and unromantic but he truly adored Mabel. And I didn't know how to do this. And I agonized over this song for months. When the idea hit me, I was on a street corner in New York City and I ran back to my piano to finish it. And maybe because it was such a difficult birth that I have a special place in my heart for this song. Soul. A lack of romance in my soul 
will turn you gray, kid. So stay away, kid. Forget my shoulder when you're in need. Forgetting birthdays is guaranteed. And should I love you? And roses suit you. So my pace is frantic, my temper's cross. With words romantic, I'm at a loss. I'd be the first one to agree that I'm preoccupied with me. And it's inbred, kid. So keep your head, kid, in me you'll find things like guts and nerve, but not the kind of things that you deserve. And so while there's a fighting chance, just turn. Dolly Leva in Los Angeles a few seasons ago. And when I heard that she had gotten the part, Karen and I have been pals for years, I picked up the phone and I said, I have an idea. I wrote a song for Ethel Merman, who I thought was going to be our original Dolly. It was a ballad, and when Carol Channing got the part, I had to take the song out of the, uh, of the score. But I put it back into the score when Ethel Merman became our seventh Dolly and, and uh, closed the show uh, after seven years. And I asked Karen, I said, what would you think if I put the song back in the score for you? And Karen said, are you kidding? <laughs> I mean, Ethel Merman is the only, she's the only one that has done this song. Yes, one. yes. And now it's me. And now it's you. I love you so much, I can't stand it. <laughs> and she sang it, and she's made it her own, and I can't wait for you to hear it. Yeah. It takes place near the end of Act One, when Dolly returns to her old neighborhood and sees her late husband Ephraim's dry goods store, all boarded up. She turns her head upward and says, Ephraim, let me go. It's been long enough, Ephraim.
Dear World, a musical version of Giroudou's The Mad Woman of Chaillot. The Countess Aurelia is told by her friends that the world is no longer the lovely place she perceives it to be. And she turns to them and says, Stop. You're frightening me. If music is no longer lovely, if laughter is no longer lilting, if lovers are no longer loving, then I don't want to know if summer is no longer carefree, if children are no longer singing, if people are no longer happy, then I don't want to know. Let me hide every truth from my eyes with a back of my hand. Let me live in a world full of lies with my for my memories all are exciting, my memories all are enchanted, my memories burn in my head with a steady glow. So if my friends, if love is dead, I don't want to Well, I've written a new score. And in fact, it's been recorded and it 
was released a few days ago, and you can buy it at uh, Tower and Virgin, and it's called Miss Spectacular. And it's about a girl who has wild daydreams. And in one of these, she pictures herself a princess in a tower who has almost everything. It's new. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I belong here on 
your reassuring arm, though I may wander to a far and remarkable place. With just one little look at your face, I'm at peace and at home. Let the whole world search for fortune and for fame, but I won't answer when the west wind calls my name. And let the whole world travel on to a faraway star. But For the parade, I want to go and taste Saturday's high life. Before the parade passes by, I'm going to get some life back into my life. I'm ready to move out in front. I've had enough of just passing my life with the rest of them, with the best of them. I can hold my head up high. For I gotta go again, I gotta drive again. I wanna feel my heart coming alive again. Before the
Did he need a stronger hand? Did he need a lighter touch? Was I soft or was I tough? Did I give enough? Did I give too much? At the moment Did I ever turn away? Would I be there when he called? If he walked into my life today? Were his days a little dull? Were his nights? little while Did I overstate my plan? Did I stress the man and forget the child? And there must have been a million things that my heart forgot to say Would I think of one or two if he walked into my life today? Should I blame the times I pampered him or blame the times I bossed him? What a shame. I never really found the boy. What went wrong along the way? Would I make the same mistakes if he walked into my For the years that you've hummed along, thank you. Promise you'll never go away. The best of times is now. What's left of summer but a faded rose.
this moment fast and live and love as hard as you know how and make this moment last because the best of times is now is now is now so I wrote this song in 1979 for Joel Gray to sing in a show of mine called The Grand Tour. But it has a much deeper meaning for me in 2002. After the dark comes the dawn. After the night comes the day. So when you are lost in the dark, have the conviction to say, It's simply called 
surviving if before the dawn this fragile world might crack. Someone's gotta try and put the pieces back. From beneath the rubble, you'll hear a little voice say life is worth the trouble. Tomorrow.